Welcome to the Plumes of Oz where today we're going to look at the swallows and the martins. And with these birds there are two classical prefixes that will keep appearing. These are descriptive names of the European swallow, Horondo, which is the Latin prefix, and Chylodon, the Greek prefix. Together, the swallows and martins form the family Horondonidae. The common feature of the Horondonidae, or swallows and martins, is that they have excellent vision and can feed on the wing. Overall, they are pied birds with variable amounts of brown or tan. The black component has a strong metallic sheen in breeding season. The swallows naturally have a swallow or a V-shaped tail. This is elongated laterally. The martins have a shorter square tail. The wings of the Hyrundonidae are elongated giving them excellent flight abilities, including the capability of hovering. And this little bird, as you can see, has a square tail, a brown tan head, white rump with a dark tail tip, and it is called a fairy martin. It doesn't have the elongated swallow tail. The fairy martin belongs to the genus Petrochylodon. Petros from rock, chylodon again swallow, and we come up with the term rock swallow. For these birds nest in rock cavities and rock overhangs. And one of the Hyrundonidae in Northern Hemisphere is indeed called the rock swallow. The common name fairy martin is because it is the smallest of the martins. And the species name Ariel, as you can imagine, means it is a master of the air. An adult fairy martin bringing in food for the young. These insects have been caught on the fly. In flight they are excellent flies, not quite as fast as the other bullet shaped birds, the swifts and swiftlets, but they are certainly acrobatic aerial masters. All the Hyrundonidae have a very similar feeding pattern and are often found roosting and feeding in the same vicinity. Here a large flock of Horondonidae, mostly welcome swallows and fairy martins. To tell the difference in flight, look for the pale or white rump. This is usually a martin, and if it's got a tan head, a fairy martin. The swallows have a longer tail. When on the ground, it is sometimes more difficult to tell them apart, so a spotlight may help in the identification. At this site, there is a predominance of welcome swallows but tree martins and fairy martins are also represented. Perched on the barbed wire after coming in from feeding, you can see a combination of welcome swallows and fairy martin. The fairy martins have the tan head and in flight, the white rump is the usual giveaway. A time lapse of fairy martins going into a nest you can see the bullet shaped body with the large wings. White rumped Horundonidae flying over water. Then they land. Fairy martins. You may think they are after terrestrial insects, but they are not landing for food. They are after mud. Swallows and martins have varying amounts of mud in their nest construction and the fairy martin is the one that has pure mud with very little organic material. On the insert as they fly off, you can see this bird has a mouth stuffed with mud. The Hyrundonidae feed on the wing and for this they need powerful wings and excellent vision. As you can see, the wings are large and the eye is also large relative to the size of the bird. A fairy martin like this collecting grass, it's not for the construction of the nest, it is for the lining of the nest. Most of the nest material is made of clay. In contrast to this, the welcome swallow makes a nest with grass, small sticks and a small amount of clay. Petrochylodon, the martins, build their nests mostly in rocky areas. Occasionally they will nest in a large hollow limb. The fairy martins have adapted to the 21st century and today when driving over small culvert bridges it is common to see fairy martins flying out for these concrete overpasses give them much better protection from the wet weather. 
for if the nest is exposed to rain, it turns to mud. The road overpasses are engineered to cross over water, so as well as getting a dry nesting site, they are also in close proximity to the flying insects which are also attracted to the water under the overpass. Here are some nests under an overpass. Notice the different colour of the clay, showing that the clay has been collected from different areas or there are seasonal differences for the nests may be there for several years. Many passerine birds, when they come to the nest, they usually land on a twig, observe the nest and then move to the nest with fairy martins. It is more direct, but instead of landing on a perch, they will often hover outside the nest to observe the contents for a moment. So under the bridges, they do have this direct line of flight. If they do nest in hollow logs, it has to be a large hollow so they can fly directly into the nest. In contrast, the tree martin will always fly to the hollow, perch and then move into the nest. But when it comes to trees, more often the fairy martin nest is found under a large protective branch. A common feature with fairy martin nests is that the clay is moulded so that there is only a narrow entrance or a partial overhang, whereas the welcome swallow has more of an open cup structure to the nest. Orandinidae are very communal birds, so will often feed as a flock, and with nest building it is done as a collective. When it comes to feeding the young in the nest, I'm uncertain whether this is a group effect or just done by the individual pair. But certainly at some of the nests it's not unusual to see more than two birds enter. It appears that the fairy martin, like most of the Horandinidae, are monogamous but I really cannot tell the difference between a male and a female. The only noticeable morphological differences are related to age. The younger birds are more pale and have less tan on the head. Early in the morning, the fairy martins are on the ground. It's too cold for the insects to be out and about, and so they sit, enjoying the sun, waiting for the warmth to lift the insects up into the air. They observe, and as soon as the insects come out, the fairy martins take flight in search of prey. As well as catching insects in flight, they will go low over the water, plucking the insect off the water surface. As this fairy martin flies, remember the tan on the head, the pale underbelly, the white rump, for as we look at other Hyrandonidae, we need to be able to distinguish them, for they are often found together. Here on these naked tree limbs, approximately 10 metres above the ground, there are tan birds, again with a pale belly. They go soaring, flying in the air, foraging for insects on the flight. But these birds have a darker head. The only residual tan on the head is located on the forehead. This is the tree martin. It is a much darker bird than what we have seen in the fairy martins, reflected in its binomial name, Petrocolaton nigricans. For the cap is dark, the tan limited on the head to the forehead, with a variable buff on the flank and throat. The rump is slightly barred, appearing more grey than white. And the martins are flock bird, as are the other Horandonidae. Let's check out the tail of this bird with a freeze frame. Notice that it is relatively straight. Again, as a marten, it doesn't have the tail of a swallow. Tree martens nest in hollows of trees. They don't really need a large opening. They will go to a small opening, perch and then go inside the hollow to the nest, taking in any insects to the young that they have caught on the fly. I'm always amazed 
how quickly the Horan Denidae fledglings take on the appearance of an adult. Watching the birds on a perch like this, you can see that as the temperature warms up and the insects take to the air, the birds will start to track the insects with their eyes. Then suddenly they leave the perch in pursuit. Preening, an important ritual for many birds, and in particular the Hyrandonidae, for these birds feeding on the wing fly with a fluttering motion, hovering, defying gravity with quick turns in pursuit of the flying prey. Here I will demonstrate the agility of these birds in flight with the time lapse sequence. Notice how they can reverse whilst hovering. On the video you have seen the martins going in and out of the tree hollows and this is typical of a tree martin. We're uncertain sometimes whether they are nesting or not, for they do roost in tree hollows, particularly on cold nights. And sometimes during the day they will even rest in the hollows. The definitive way to be certain they are nesting is to observe as they fly into the hollow. If building the nest they will carry in some leaves for the nest lining and mud for a stable platform for the eggs to sit on. When they carry in food, you can be certain that the nest is active, not just a roosting site. A tree martin nest is concealed within a hollow limb of a tree, so we can't really see into it. But here, the tree martins are collecting mud, just like the other Hyrundonidae. And the reason for this is that they want to make a level base so that the eggs won't roll down a sloping limb. As the chicks get close to fledging, you may see the adults like this, feeding the chicks at the nest entrance. Tree martins on a hollow limb there are multiple entrance holes along this limb, and the tree martins being flock orientated birds group together and there are several nests within this limb. Here you can see one bird flies to the nest hole carrying a leaf. This is for lining of the nest, but then the bird exits and the partner bird appears. Once the partner bird has gone, he carries the leaf back into the hollow limb for nest lining. As mentioned, this limb has several entrances and it's interesting to watch these birds for they usually go in in pairs, but not always. Sometimes multiple birds seem to go in and out of the holes, suggesting that there is perhaps group feeding or multiple nests within this same limb. Let's turn now to another Hyrundonidae, the welcome swallow. Here they are flying above the trees as the insects come out. They have a forked tail. Rather handsome birds with their real deep tan going more to a chestnut colour. And the black has this beautiful sheen. Across the tail there is a barred white stripe. And these birds are of enormous help to man because of the amount of insects that they devour. Like some of the other Horandonidae, these birds have also ad adapted to urban development. For under the eaves and old sheds, they often build their nests composed of mud combined with straw, sticks and leaves. They feed on the wing and are probably the most common Horandonidae found. Their distribution is wide throughout most of Australia. 
Only places where they are not found are in the arid areas where there is no water, for they are very dependent on catching insects, and usually that implies insects flying over water. They are capable of hovering. The binomial name for the welcome swallow is Hirunde neoxena. Hirunde, as you can imagine, means swallow, and neoxena means new bird or new visitor. This species name probably comes from the fact that they are often found just outside the door of the veranda. Time invested in watching welcome swallows in flight, particularly over water, is time well spent. Their in-flight capabilities are enormous, and as they come down to just peck a small insect off the water surface, using their amazing ability to twist and turn is delightful. The videos you're watching now are in very slow motion, taken at a very high frame rate. So you can imagine when you speed this up by 16 times that these birds are extremely agile. Here, hovering as the wind blows towards them, they keep going down to the surface, just getting those little insects that have blown in. In flight, the long V tail helps the welcome swallow to turn to the left and to the right. Of the swallows and martins that I have observed in Australia, the welcome swallow is the master of flight. See the white band crossing the retrices of the tail, a characteristic feature of the welcome swallow. The Horandonidae are renowned for catching insects in flight. Look at this mass of welcome swallows. As insects go into a swarming mode, the birds are in a frantic chase behind them. And this exemplifies the group behaviour of the swallows. And the swallows, like the preceding martins, are group orientated when they roost and feed. The ability of these birds to catch insects on the flight is rather surprising. When you look at their face, you can see their eyes are pointing laterally and you wonder how they can get focus to catch prey in the air. The interesting feature is that their eyesight is amazing. The raptors, as we know, have a very big fovea, or a point on the eye where the light is concentrated, giving them a wide field of vision with a higher density of rods and cones, so that their acuity, even at long distances, is still amazing. The Hyrandonidae are a little bit different. They have not only one fovea, but two. So each eye is capable of stereoscopic vision. In addition, the rods and cones of the Hyrandonidae eye are especially sensitive to accelerated movement, helping them to catch in-flight prey. Here on this sandy beach, this welcome swallow is collecting material that has a gelatinous component to it. And this is ideal for nest building. They use it in combination with the sand to help stabilize the nest. When the rain comes like this, it's not uncommon to see the welcome swallows just flying rapidly, trying to get the water off their wings, so that when they return to their nest or roosting site within the nest, they don't carry the water, for it would turn the clay nest into mud. Leaving the beautiful little welcome swallow, there is one more swallow in Australia that is commonly seen, more so to the south, and this is the white backed swallow. It has a beautiful white back, is also a master of flight, and has the V-shaped swallow tail. Here it is in flight over the sand dunes in South Australia. On behalf of the Plumes of Oz, thank you for watching this video. If you would like to subscribe to this channel, you will get notification about our next release of Australian Birds in the Wild.